over 60 percent of africans are um, directly or indirectly depend on farming any changes in climate would impact on the livelihood of these people there will be an increase in competition between different groups and this increased competition will invariably lead to conflict the key issue is that there have been changes in farming timetable. Those who are able to plant over two or three seasons cannot do that any further. Many of these people depend on the rainfall. Climate change impacted on migration, especially um, when you look at the nomadic communities and pastoralists, how the vagaries of the climate have impacted on their movement and how these have resulted in collusion with um, sedentary farmers and how this resulted in violent conflicts across over 10 countries in Africa. Climate change is not being linked to conflict, which is one of the things that I am trying to do in my research, in order that not just to understand the changes in the climate, but also to understand how this explain increased conflict on the African continent. Researchers at the University of Oxford concluded that greed was a determining factor when explaining conflict in resource-endowed community. In the research I carried out, I discovered that it's actually not greed, it's sometimes due to human security. What happens is uncontrolled exploitation of resources often pollute the environment. It did then impact on the sources of livelihood of the people because most of the time these people depend either on farming or fishing for sustainable livelihood. When we talk about sustainability, um, the key issue is that every human being would want to have a livelihood. And when that livelihood become unsustainable, then this impacts on their human security. A key determinant of conflict is competition. Either competition for water or competition for land, competition for scarce resources would naturally result in conflict. At Liz Beckett University, one of the things we pride ourselves in doing is that we engage in research-led teaching. So as students, we will bring our research into our teaching so you will have a direct exposure of the research projects that we carry out and also be a part of the community to engage in such research projects yourself. If you put on your radio or your TV today, you will hear something that might be discussed in the class the following day because we talk about current events. We have a means of actually linking historical content to current issues. And this is one of the key interesting things about politics and international relations, a combination of both historical content and empirical issues or analysis.